Hey, this is Pastor Fred from St. James Lutheran Church in Marion, Indiana. And we're talking about our baptismal font again this week. We, we had that last week and uh, in this program of what is a Lutheran. We're talking about why do we do baptism the way that we do baptism. I'm going to put the camera over here a little bit. Just some adjusting. Okay. So here's a question for you. First of all, who are you? Remember we asked that last week? Well, before we answer that, let me ask this question. Or maybe you're asking this question. Why would I be baptized? Why would I bring, for instance, my infant to be baptized? Why would I be baptized? Well, what does baptism do for us? Well, baptism um, is a promise from God through the water and through the word that he will give us the Holy Spirit and the forgiveness of our sins. And so we believe that when infants come up, because God's doing the work, that God gives them the Holy Spirit and gives them the forgiveness of their sins and makes them his child. Same with adults. Maybe we believe before we come to get baptized, because we hear the word, but that baptism seals us in that faith. And again, marks us as one um, um, as, as, as God's, God's child. Some people, though, become confused if they've been exposed to um, other churches and, and teaching that is kind of, um, well, what you call American Christianity, about, well, what's the baptism, for instance, there's water baptism and there's baptism of the Holy Spirit. Are those two different things? And some denominations teach that they are. We as Lutherans do not. We teach that there is um, one baptism, that water baptism um, is the same as Holy Spirit baptism, that in our baptism we receive the Holy Spirit. And in fact, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you, you can't be a Christian because being a Christian means that you have the Holy Spirit within you. Let me read you a couple um, scripture verses that, that, that prove this, that water baptism and Holy Spirit baptism are the exact same. And this is from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Not two baptisms, one baptism. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Okay, spirit and water. John 3, 5. Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And in the Greek, the water and the spirit are joined together almost as one word, meaning that water and the Holy Spirit are the same. Titus 3, 5. He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Again, let's talk about baptism, renewal of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 11, But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. So water baptism um, and Holy Spirit baptism are one and the same. Now, some people look at this Holy Spirit baptism in different ways. Um, for instance, um, Baptists will say, well, you know, there's water baptism where you get, because you're doing that as, a, as in obedience to God, um, not something God's doing, you're doing. And then there's the coming to faith that the Word of God, and that's that Holy Spirit baptism where we actually come to faith. And again, we pointed out uh, the baptism of the sacrament is a means of grace that gives that. Others like Pentecostal say, well, no, there has to be a special manifestation of the Spirit, whether it's speaking in tongues or, or, or something that's in there. And they say, look, look, look what happened in the book of Acts. But what you see in the book of Acts is, number one, the day of Pentecost. And um, the Holy Spirit is poured out there upon baptized believers because it's the coming of the Holy Spirit into the world to start the church. So it's a very unique event, a one-time event. Then we see later um, that some Samaritans are baptized. And Samaritans were non-Jews. And they, too, received this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Again, that was to signify to the Jews who thought they were the only chosen people that the Samaritans were to be allowed in the church as well. And that we have no record of that continuing to happen. Then we see Cornelius um, in the book of Acts, who is a Gentile, um, has this outpouring of the Holy Spirit when he comes to faith. And again, Gentiles, nobody thought that they were to be included um, in this new Christianity. That was a signif 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 signifier from God that they were. So always baptism and this outpouring of the Holy Spirit are directly connected. I mean, because what happened on the uh, 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 in, in day of Pentecost, all those people were later, he said, Bap be baptized, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And they were baptized all that day, there's 3,000 people. Um, the Samaritans, it was in connection to their baptism. With Cornelius, 
It was in connection with his baptism. So these big events were just to prove that the apostles' teaching was the truth and that this was from God. And we don't see that occur in history after that. So we get baptized once as Lutherans, and we believe we receive that Holy Spirit, which makes us a child to God, which gives us the forgiveness of, of, of our sins and seals us in, in that salvation. But what happens later? You know, okay, you get baptized once, that's great. I've been baptized and I take communion every Sunday, but you know, what does this baptism mean? Is it like, you know, I became a member and they gave me a membership card here. Your, your baptism certificate is your membership card. And, you know, check that at the door every day when you come through or when you get up to heaven, present to Peter your baptismal card. And he'll let you in because you're, you're a member of, of the group. No, that's not, that's not what it is. Edmund Schlink, who is a German theologian, put it best when he talked about what happens after you're baptized. He said, our lives are an unfolding of our baptism. In other words, now that we're baptized, we live that baptism out. We, we live our faith out that's given in that baptism. And um, we know from Scripture that we have two Adams in us. We have the old Adam, which is a sinful nature that we inherited from our original parents. Now, when you become a Christian, doesn't mean you stop sinning. We, we always continue to sin. We just believe that, you know, now we're forgiven sinners. So we have this old Adam that wants to do what it wants to do. Wants to be its own God. It's, it's the sinful Adam. Then we have the new Adam that's given to us in baptism, which is Christ. And that new Adam wants to do what God wants to do. Wants, it wants to follow God. It, it wants to do God's will. And they're constantly at war with one another. And you can kind of think of it this way. You know, the old commercials with the good angels on one side whispering in the guy's ear and the demonic angels whispering in the other ear. It's basically what you got. You got the old Adam going, hey, let's go out and do this thing that we probably shouldn't do. And the new Adam said, no, we shouldn't do that. Let's go out and do this thing for God. They're at war. Every day when we remember our baptism, we daily drown that old Adam. We hold him under until he can't breathe any longer. And we raise the new Adam to life. And so every day we're remembering, hey, we are baptized. We have the Holy Spirit in us. We have Christ in us. And now we're called to go out and live this Christian life. We're called to live out um, our baptism. So how do we remember our baptism? Because, you know, we say, well, we remember our baptism. Uh, well, on Sunday morning, it's pretty easy. In the invocation, we start in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which is what we're baptized into. Uh, their are names. Um, we remember at the benediction, at, uh, at the confession and absolution, we say the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we can remember that daily by, you know, um, some people cross themselves, which is a Lutheran practice as well. Um, not commanded, but we do that. Um, you can do it by um, just uh, opening up what your, your morning with invocation that you know, this day is going to be lived in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Or, or you have the Lord's Prayer in the name of the Father, Son, and, and Holy Spirit. So there's ways to remember our baptism. So baptism gives us great gifts. It gives us uh, salvation um, through the gift of the Holy Spirit in us. And then we live that out. So let's go back to that question. So who are you? Well, if you're baptized, you're, you are a baptized child of God. That is your identity. You may be a lot of things. You may be a mother. You may be a father. You may be a son. You may be um, an engineer. You may be a lawyer. You may be a school teacher. You may be um, an electrician. Whatever you are, that can be, well, that's my identity. Well, that's great, but your underlying identity, who you really are at the core, who you will be for eternity, is that you are a child of God because you were baptized through the water and the word of God, which gave you the forgiveness of your sins and eternal life and marked you as one who will always be God's child. Well, thank you for joining us uh, with uh, What is Lutheran? with Pastor Fred here at St. James Lutheran Church in Marion, Indiana. We'll see you next week uh, where we'll begin to talk about confession absolution. That'll be interesting. Peace out.